Driver mapping allows us to fix issues with paths to our files. Uh, if we happen to have files that uh, appear as offline or we've moved files from one location to another, replaced a hard drive, maybe we're moving files between PC and Mac, the driver mapping feature allows us to relink the files back to our database. So if you're dealing with offline files or you need to fix the paths to uh, locations because you've been moving or changing folders, then you want to be using the driver mapping function. So to access the driver mapping tool, we go into the options and we select driver map. So we have two different sections within the driver mapping screen. So the top section is for doing on the fly replacements. We can have four different um, path substitutions that we can do. And so what we have to do is enable this feature. So if we click enable, you'll notice that uh, it has enabled it in the background. And now this will substitute whatever we put in the from field to the to field. Now it should be noted that this is designed to replace the root of a path and not an individual folder. So you need to enter in from the start of your path, so the drive letter and the root folder that you want to replace. If you need to replace subfolders, then you need to use the find replace method. So this is a quick method to allow us to change the path if we've moved our content from one drive to another drive or from one computer to another computer. Uh, it's also very handy if we happen to move our database and our files from PC to Mac or vice versa. So to demonstrate this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my local library here. So if we have a look, the drive location is D test library. So I'm on Windows. So what I want to do is I want to replace that. I'm going to open up my folder here and I'll just close down base head so there's no files in use. And what I want to do is just rename this test library here to test library two. And so going back to base head, uh, what we'll find is that all of our files are now broken. They're offline uh, because it's still referencing D test library. And uh, now the location is D test library two. So all I really need to do is update this uh, root path from test library to test library two. So if we go into the driver mapping, make sure it's enabled. We want to put in D test library and we'll replace that with test library two. Now, if we're working through a database that has uh, files on a number of different locations, uh, what we can do is uh, let's say we've come across a file that seems to be lost, but other ones are okay. Uh, so what we can do in that case is if we have the file selected and it says the uh, media is currently offline and we just simply want to, uh, we don't want to take notice, maybe we don't have the um, details pane or this information available real easy. Uh, what we can do is just go into driver mapping and instead we can just click the copy, sorry, copy location button. And this will actually copy the location to the file that is currently selected. So the old location to the file. So in this case, what I want to do is update D test library to D test library two. So I've enabled this now and I just close this window. And now when I go back to the results list and select the file, it is instantly relinked automatically. So we can make up to four different uh, path substitutions in the uh, in the top section here. Uh, what we can also do is use this section just for testing a, uh, a resolution. So we've put in uh, that we wanted to change the test library location to test library two, and that has worked. What I would like to do now is because I've moved my library, I've decided that yes, this is the new location that's all working. All I want to do is copy these details down into the find and replace. Now, the find and replace uh, section of the uh, of the tool can actually find and replace just the term that you need. We don't actually have to have the entire string from start to finish. So I can simply replace test library with test library two. And so what you'll find is that uh, when we are replacing the find term with the replace term in our fields, we also have this option. Uh, if you're on PC, it will actually ask if you want to apply this to the path field for Mac OS. If you're on Mac OS, it'll actually say, do you want to apply this to the folder field on Windows? 
Uh, now, this is because when we import files into Basehead, it actually creates two different paths or, or two different folder locations in the database for us. Uh, and this is designed so that it makes it easy to carry a database between uh, PC and Mac without constantly having to make changes. So the way that this works is on Mac OS, the path to your files is called a path. Uh, on Windows, it's called a folder location. Uh, now this is just quickly to demonstrate how this looks in the database. So looking in the database, we see that there's a path field and we see that there is a folder field. So the big difference between the two is that Windows uses the backslash, whereas Mac uses the forward slash. And what Basehead does is it stores the links to these files in these two locations. When we load it on Mac, it automatically uses path. When we load it on PC, it uses the folder location. So when we're doing this particular update, it actually says, do, you, do we want to apply this change to the path field for Mac OS as well? Or if you're on Mac, to the folder field. Uh, so I can click yes uh, to update that. That just means that uh, if I have a database linked for use on a Mac system as well, it'll update that for the Mac system automatically. Now a warning message just to say that it's going to uh, write this to the database and there is no undo function. So you need to kind of be sure. Um, so that's where we can test it first um, using the top section of the uh, driver mapping and then write it to our database. And once we've done this replacement in the uh, database, what we wanna do is remove the original find and replace mechanism. Uh, otherwise this could create some problems. Just simply remove that or disable this replace section here. And now when we go back to our results list, we can see our files are working and it is also now showing the new location to our files. Now the last section down the bottom here is uh, applicable to uh, mainly removable drive media. So if we have a removable drive that uh, we have our library on, if we happen to copy that particular library to a brand new drive and we're using the drive ID functionality to, uh, to create our drive mapping, then what we can do is if we need to replace that drive or update it, obviously the drive ID is going to change, we need to then update that. And the way that this part of it works is if we have a drive ID that uh, is currently not available in Basehead, so that drive is missing in the database, then the drive that's missing will appear in our list of drives down here. What we can then do is select that drive and then tell it which drive is the new drive. So let's say that we've replaced this drive. Uh, the F drive here is now the new replacement for it. We would select that click apply and that will update the drive ID of this drive into our database. So this drive ID remapping is a Windows only feature. Uh, it is not required on Mac OS. Uh, so for uh, Windows users, you'll see this down the bottom. For Mac OS users, uh, you won't see this particular feature. All right, so what we're gonna demonstrate now is moving a database from PC to Mac. Uh, so in this case, what we're going to do is take the database that we were using on PC and we're going to import that and fix up the locations uh, on our Mac OS system. And I'm just going to import, or sorry, I'm going to open the database. So what I've done is I've copied, just copied this the database file from my location on my PC and I've copied it over to my Mac. Uh, so it's available just straight in my documents here. And we'll see that I've got the drive mapping test database. So I'm going to select that and open it. And our files have all imported, but uh, as we would expect, the locations are not valid. One of the first things to note though, is that um, going from PC uh, to Mac, if we have a look over in the, uh, uh, in the details section, you'll notice that uh, on the PC, we had a, a, a database stored in D test library. Uh, on here, it's actually called volumes. You can see that there's already a complete difference in the way that the path is stored. And this is because we've got those two different paths in the database. So any path updates and stuff that we do on the Mac are going to apply to our Mac system, unless we tell it to also apply it to the Windows Explorer path, it will only affect our Mac system. So what we wanna do is now update this and point it to our test library location, which is also just located in my documents folder. 
And now, first of all, I'm going to replace uh, the old location that I've currently got, which is volumes. So if I just uh, enter, press the copy button here, I'm not interested in the subfolders because they're all correct. I just want to replace the volumes section uh, with the location of my test library that I imported, uh, which I've placed in my documents folder. So on the Mac OS system, it would be under users, my username, documents, and then the test library folder. So one thing to keep in mind uh, on the Mac OS system here, uh, don't put a trailing slash on your paths here. Leave the uh, leave the slash off on both sides, or the uh, the path may not uh, may not work correctly. Uh, once we've entered both of these uh, details in, I'll click close. We can see that the file plays. So we've now got uh, all of our files linked up. I can leave it this way or I can choose to update this in my database so I can actually update the database details so I don't have to use remapping every time. And just simply update these details below. Now one thing to know is that if we want to be able to carry this between both Mac and Windows, we need to be aware that we don't want to update these locations onto the PC side or vice versa onto the Mac side, unless we're making actual changes to the folder structure itself. So we're only interested in changing the root location of the, uh, the folder. Uh, we don't need to worry about changing the subfolders. If we need to update the, uh, the, the actual structure of the files themselves, then we would use a replacement and replace it in both to keep it synchronized between them. And now the details have been updated directly in the database. So hopefully that covers driver remapping in enough detail.